Alrighty guys, welcome back to part two for this Fijon FJ9 110 scale drift car, or it is also uh, formerly known as the Deantag D9 Bulldog, I'm pretty sure. And part one is building the shocks, or step one, sorry. And when you open up the bags, the shocks come like this. They are not put together, they are just in, you know, semi put together state and you need to kind of reinstall it all obviously you need to put in your uh, fluid as well it's just all in separate pieces but all this stuff here is all aluminium and uh, yeah it's like if you would have seen part one when I unbox all the parts everything is really really nice quality so this is all the shock parts they're obviously more you have the rings and the little piston and all that stuff is in here and like I mentioned before this instruction manual is a little bit tricky where it doesn't tell you you know do this do that you know times two or times four it's just uh, common sense I think when you put it all together so let me get started on step number one here and uh, yeah step two needs part A or sorry bag A and bag B so let's get to it absolute first step done as you can see that is the piston that goes in this particular shock body here and the first set that you build here that is your traditional style as you can see once it's finished it looks like a traditional traditional style shock and that is for your rear suspension the front suspension is a little bit different here as you can see that's kind of mounted upside down when it's finished it looks exactly like a traditional McPherson strut in your uh, everyday road car so yeah, that's pretty cool. Now I hate these little clips. So far, so good. I'm not going to jinx myself. They went on, no problems. But I always, always lose these. So, yep, they're on. Thank God. Now next up, we've got these two small red O-rings. They just get pushed into the bottom here to cause a nice seal. And you have this kind of like a plastic or a know, Delron style part here that goes right on the bottom there and you have to make sure they have it on the right direction as you've got this little lip here and that has to be in the correct direction so like I said it makes sure you have to follow these instructions very carefully they aren't as self-explanatory as a Tamiya kit now once they're all in place you've got this small nicely uh, done aluminium cap that screws on to the end just like that seals all that kind of stuff in so give that a nice tight there, just finger tight don't want to scratch any of that up, but there we go. That's that done. And next up we have the top here where the spring sits up here and you screw this down to adjust the spring and this O-ring fits inside this small channel just like that. Haven't seen that before. That's really a nice attention to detail. And then what's now once that's on there, it's easily you can just put this all in and thread it in. And there we go. I'm not too sure what that O-ring in that top uh, groove does there. I'm not too sure because it's not sealing anything. And uh, there's no fluid up in that section. I don't know if it's just... Yeah, any of you guys in the comments know. Uh, please, yeah, let me know. Now that is all on and I've just screwed all the way up to the top. We can adjust that later on. But next up we, we can feed this through now. There we go there. Now once... Like I said, this all comes kind of semi built together, but you obviously need to take it all apart to thread it all in properly and put it all together. So now we can thread this on, and like everything is aluminium here, even these, which is really, really nice. So if you want to tighten these by hand, you can, and you know, if you really want to get that nice and tight, you can always put a bit of uh, paper towel there or a bit of cloth and put some multi grips on there or something and tighten them down. But generally, I've found that the they are right hand type because it doesn't really go anywhere once it's all set in place but there we go that does feel good <laughs> without any oil so now what we can do we can fill it up because when we want to cap it off with this nice little rubber seat there and then we can put the caps on top here's the caps just here and there we go that is down there Next step, we get the springs. I'll fill them up off camera because, yeah, not not that exciting. But uh, and I got to do four of these. Here we go there, 
and like any other normal shock you just install this there done and there is one suspension done or one shock done they look cool <laughs> just like that I love that uh, kind of steel color looks really really nice and the polished aluminium all together but there is one shock done I have four of these to do when I get to this stage here where it deviates a little bit I will uh, start the camera back up and there is a shocker that's provided doesn't really say what the weight is but uh, yeah I think it's just got enough for you to do all four and uh, yeah just it's one of those things you want to do it carefully don't overfill it you want to make sure you get rid of as much bubbles in there as you can. So you just go slow and uh, yeah, keep filling it up until you know you get near to the top. Don't go all the way. And that is it. Okay, now I've finished the rear two, just like that. Very nice. Everything fits really, really well. And I'm up to the front two, and as you can see, it is much smaller in height so you do have enough uh, shock over there so not to worry and also um, it only requires one o-ring at the bottom whereas the rear larger ones require two now also you do get two spare clips which is awesome so far so good haven't lost any but where it also changes on the rear section here is here is your front part of your front steering mechanism and as you can see everything is already put together and yeah the, the bearings in there and everything feel really really smooth so that section is already pre-built out of the kit it's got part carbon fiber there and the rest is aluminium this body clip is just to hold this uh, hex on there so it doesn't fall off in the kit but what happens now and I wanted to show you before I actually complete it the top of this shock actually joins up to here as you can see in this picture just like that so before you can seal it all up like the traditional style like this at the top you have this but you can't just put that on first you need to put the screw in there and that goes up through the bottom just like that so I'll do that and I'll do these other parts and I'll show you how it looks when it's finished pretty complex but I, I think it works really really well and there you have it doesn't that look sweet? So as you can see, just like a real car, this will be from if you open the bonnet, that's how you'd be looking down where your actual suspension struts and all that is. So there you go. Finished off there with a three millimeter nut. Just add some Loctite on there. And it's also secured in place here by a three by eight millimeter nut directly threaded or screwed into the carbon fiber bit here. So that's it. Step one and two are completed. Wow, I'm really impressed with the quality. It really looks awesome. Okay, that is step one and two done. Rear suspension, front suspension, and all you should have left, left is these two clips. So, awesome stuff. Next step three. Step three, use A and F and also bag number three. We're uh, making the uh, front steering mechanism. As you can see, this joins the left and right. This is a linkage. It is really nice carbon fiber piece. And what's also cool, if I can get that to uh, focus in, what's going on here? There we go. It also includes ball bearings and they're pre-fit in there as well. And you also got these type of small uh, flange bearings really nice and also another size here same type of thing but uh, yeah, all the parts like I said before are really nice quality really nice machined aluminium parts there we go no burrs or anything on there either which is really nice so let's get cracking start putting this together I'm probably going to use about a litre of Loctite on all these stuff because it's all going into metal so definitely want to make sure you use that now I love using these four-way wrenches to tighten these particular ball screws because they're a perfect fit like that and you can really get down there and uh, torque it down nicely. 
you get these in heaps of kits, so you probably have these lying around, but uh, yeah, come to these. They're black ball ends or ball screws, sorry. You have to have a fair few of them. There's actually five for this particular step and five uh, button head screws as well. Now, just before I button all this up, you can see it's got you install these ball bearings top and bottom, so it's really nice, uh, really good fit. S no slop at all in these bearings, and once that's all in there, you know, ball bearings in this particular steering mechanism just so buttery smooth, really, really nice. And uh, yeah, look at that, no play whatsoever. Now, I'm just joining these two halves together, and you can see the really nice machining that's got into it. This connector here has this nice recess in there fits really well and like I said they have ball bearings and look at that perfect fit it's even got a tiny little washer that you place just on top to give it the right amount of clearance or the right amount of tolerance really really nice put together really well I'll put these all together and I'll show you how it looks so there we have two completed parts this particular here really nicely done and also this part here looks really cool so next step is Oh, these also were called for, but they were pre-installed into this connecting bar here, so you don't need them, or you might need them later on, but we'll put them back into the bag so we don't lose anything. Next up, we have to build, or we start to build some of the suspension components, or we have the wishbones here, and here they are here. Really, really great, and uh, let's have a look at these, actually. There you go. There's a nice close-up for you guys. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not too sure about uh, quality of um, aluminium parts and all that kind of stuff because I haven't really had any. But uh, so far, these look really good. Hardly any burrs. Well, there's no burrs actually. Tiny little bits of. Well, I don't know if you want to be pedantic and call that a slight chip, but uh, yeah, so far so good. They are some pretty small pieces of carbon fiber. Now, when I was going through this step, I was looking at the parts I'd need, and you need these tiny washers. Right there, and I was looking, oh, they look the same as the previous step, but these are 0 0.01 mil, and the ones here are 0.05, so that's amazing. And uh, I just checked them out on here, and it's pretty close. There we go, 0 0.01 for the previous step. So, what I've actually did, because they looked similar, so similar by eye, I put the 0.5 ones in here, which I need for step four. And so I've got to swap them around, but 0.4 or 0 0.04 mil of a difference. That's pretty tight tolerances. Now these are the ones I needed for step four, which I put into step three. I took them out, everything's good. So there you go, 0.47 of a millimeter. So first step here, we installed this ball screw into this small piece of carbon fiber. Then once that's done, you install a piece of carbon fiber to this particular suspension arm, just like that. Make sure you use the... Uh, Loctite and also be diligent with checking the size of the screws because there are not just this particular style like a countersunk screw, there's other sizes as well so just be careful with that. Like I said, I don't think this is meant for first time builders because yeah, you can catch you out just like that particular washers as well. Now in each corner of the car you have these kind of like a ball joint almost not too sure the exact technical term, but anyway, you need to put these up inside these corners just like that. And they are retained in there via this washer just like that, kind of laps over the edge. So I'll put that in there and uh, we'll see how it looks. You also have this kind of big long grub screw. I think that's to, I think that's like the droop height or something like that. And you can see it gives you a measurement here of 1.8 millimeters if you're looking at it like that so 1.8 millimeters from the uh, from the bottom up to the top and then you lock it away with a nut up the top now to finish step number four all we need to do is put the suspension pins and they have to be a certain uh, space in between on the diagram here it gives us how it should be as we can see there 5.6 millimeters and 5.6 millimeters as well and it also has this tube here which is a spacer as well which you install later this is just going to float around at the moment but in the next step you'll see how it all anchors in so this particular hinge pin or 
well, yeah, we could say hinge pin, is held in place via this small grub screw, which goes in the side there. So I'll lock all this up, and this will be step number four all done. That's step four done. To finish off, we just need to put a small 0.5 millimeter washer just there, and this other sleeve, which is, I don't know, roughly, what, 10 millimeter on each end, just like that. So that's it, finished up. So we can move to step number five, which is actually starting to get some of the chassis because it's like a modular chassis. There are three separate parts, the front, center, and the back. So you build them individually, then you put them all together at the end. So let's get started on step five. Now, step five, we start to get uh, this nice motor mount here. And the first step is we've got to slide this pinion and it has the uh, shaft already attached to it. In the instruction manual it says you have to put it together, but in my kit, it came already uh, screwed on and everything, which is excellent. So slide that in just like that. And what we have here, we have another, well, I don't know, it's not a gear, but I think uh, a pulley attaches it uh, attaches to the face of this. So you just gotta slide that in there just like that and lock it away with a small set screw just in there. And once it's all installed, that is how it looks. Everything spins nicely. And now I have to attach it to the chassis. Now one thing I noticed is that it has these nice nylon sleeves here. So uh, that should uh, wear nicely and not uh, wear prematurely. Just with steel on steel, it's got some nice nylon there. So that should be good for longevity. And this just basically goes on just like that. With, we need six millimeter countersunk screws. And just like that, fit and finish so far in this kit is, uh, is really nice. That is in there, as you can see, this is the front first or modular section of the car so looking good next up we have to install the suspension arms and with that spacer in there that will go just in just like that but uh, the color scheme looks sick with this uh, aluminium and carbon fiber really cool and next up we have to install these small little ball ends onto the chassis and the correction for this PC you need two 8mm uh, screws and the rest you need six millimeters. So we'll install these two little ball cups on the chassis just here. Pretty uh, unique design actually, I've never really seen that before. All right, next up we have these two little blocks that hold the other side of the suspension pin and they just simply go into the bottom of the chassis there. So I'm not doing a time lapse of this, it's a bit hard because it's so small and uh, yeah, it might not be in focus sometimes, so I want it just to be nice and clear but uh, yeah, there's those small little blocks there, and they have the nylon, I guess it's a bushing or a, you could call it that I guess inside it, and you've got to make sure that it's, it is in the right direction. So just like that, simple stuff, and yes, lock tight like everything else. And obviously you need to make sure you rest of the suspension system is in, otherwise you would not be able to install it. And simple as that. Looking forward to getting into drifting. Uh, I used to have a drift, a nitro drifting car back in the day, and uh, nitro is not the best for drifting. Generally, revving the hell out of the uh, engine, and it's getting a little bit hot. So I don't think it's. I don't. Well, I don't even think. Well, there is some nitro drifting cars around, but I think it's majority all electric. So much easier and not as noisy as well. So there we go. One suspension arm fully installed. As you can see, there is that spacer, spacer, sorry, there's a small washer in there and everything seems to fit really nicely. So you can see with these ball that you, you uh, attach on the front of the uh, chassis there, it matches up here. So that's kind of a unique design. And there we have step five done. Left and right suspension arms are on. Everything seems to be uh, in where it should. This was binding a little bit, so it's gonna move it around a bit. Uh, these little nylon bushes or inserts uh, tolerance is really really tight so they seem fine and when the springs are pushing down on here I think it's going to be no issues because it's going to be fairly stiff but there you go step five done Fit finishes really nice so next on to step six Now step six involves us making the first, well it's not really a differential, but this gear is plastic and that pinion is metal. 
and uh, simply we're just sliding all this on together and uh, fitting it in the housing that's going to support it. The picture is just like this. There we go. So yeah, straight shaft or locked differentials. I'm not too sure exactly what the terminology is for a drift car, but uh, yeah, hopefully that'll work very well. And I've noticed that in here, there is one-way bearings. Already installed a one-way bearing, so you can spin it this way, but uh, you can't turn it the other way. Now this plastic gear is held onto this aluminium casing by these, oh, there goes one. Saw it, it's cool, by these tiny, tiny screws just in there. Okay, now once that is installed, you need to support the ends with two ball bearings and these are 10 by 15 by 4 millimeter bearings and they simply slip on just there and just like that and now you have these carriers on the other side really nicely done and they have these kind of plastic or nylon uh, sleeves that go over them just like that one on either side and I think that just takes up the slack not too sure exactly why that's there or maybe for vibration or something like that but uh, there we go because I know with this plastic gear it will run really really quietly so these just get installed one on either side just like that and we'll get the other one here we go I'm really enjoying building this kit actually Something different than just monster trucks and uh, off-road cars. So there we go. That's it. So that uh, is how it looks when it's all put together. And now we can actually install it into the front, well, front modular section or the front bulkhead of this car. And I think it just simply slots in just like that. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. So once... It's in there, as you can see. It does bind nicely. Everything seems to work very well. So I'll put those. Well, it's got uh, two screws underneath, and then also four at the front here as well. Now, the thread lock that I use here, it's you, if you touch plastic with it, it's so uh, it reacts really, really badly with it. Just uh, cracks plastic it, it just makes it so brittle so yeah I'm really cautious not to get anywhere near this plastic gear for argument's sake because this is uh, the only one I haven't used thread lock on this kit yet and they're the only three Phillips head screws that I've encountered in the whole kit everything is allen key so yeah I'm very wary of I, uh, I noticed that when I was building an older kit of mine I think it was an old Tamiya kit and a touch part of the uh, I think a, a shock tower that was plastic and uh, obviously I wasn't using it for plastic but I just hit it by accident and yeah just as soon as you touch it, it just it just crumbled like a like a biscuit or something couldn't believe it so not all of them are like that but uh, this particular one this one is from Hobby King and uh, yeah I think the Tamiya stuff that I've used previously didn't didn't uh, have any issues with plastic but uh, this particular hobby wing one there, so I C L O C blue does react with plastic. So just a word of warning, and uh, there we go. So front four screws are in, and they are 10 millimeter screws. We have to have two more in the bottom here, and there also is a rear support, just like that. Need to add that uh, anchor right there as well. And also a brace that runs in the middle here, which is held in place by a, a huge 20 mil long set screw. Okay, and I'll just tighten these last two 10 millimeter screws in just like that. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And that is looking very impressive. Love all the carbon fiber and the aluminium together. It's a great. Uh, color combo and here is that uh, here we go here it just slides in I think just around down here and there we go so it slides in there 
really uh, tight tolerances, that's for sure. And here is that big set through, and that just goes in here. And that is because there are some other components that fit on to the end of this later on in the build. And there we have it. Part six is done. Looking really good. Love how it uh, looks like I just said. I just think that color combo looks awesome. But there is step six done. So let's move on to step seven. So step seven requires BF and also bag number four. And within bag number four, there are bags inside of bags which includes this particular part, like a spacer that uh, attaches to that big set screw that we put on earlier. It has this nice carbon fiber plate here as well that goes along here. And also it needs to be attached via four 3.8 millimeter screws. Sorry, not four, three eight millimeter screws. So that was step seven, very easy. It has these three small spacers that go in between. Right there, you can see them. Or four, sorry, one, two, three, and four. And step eight is really easy. It's about attaching this awesome looking pulley to the front here. Awesome stuff, and that's just using four six millimeter screws. And that's it, easy as that. And as you can tell, it's starting to come to life now. This is the motor mount, the motor pinion will be spinning out here, and this belt will attach to it just like that. Pretty sweet. Okay, so step eight is all completed, and now we're up to step nine, and that involves need another drive shaft here, another pulley, which is I love these. Well, sorry, these belts. They look exactly like the real thing in the real car, and they are numbered. As you see, we need three M one two six. As you see there on here, it says three M one two six. So I haven't put this one on from step eight because uh, the motor needs to go here, but this step requires another small pulley to go on the front of here, so I might not be able to get back on later on. So for this, I will put it on, and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. There we go here. So we have to attach another style of pulley at the front here and attach another pulley there up here, sorry, and attach it via the belts, and that it attaches to this shaft back here, which is this one right there. And here are the two pulleys, they are 18 teeth on here, there are several. Uh, the one on the back of this shaft uh, will be a 19 tooth, so just remember that they aren't that much bigger in size, so just double check. We need two 18 and one 19 for the rear. So the first pulley slides on in this direction and you want to make sure that grub screw is going to be hitting the nice flat surface on this main shaft here. So just slide that all the way on, just like that. And always, like I just said, make sure these guys, the grub screw is gonna be hitting that flat surface. Otherwise, you know, things can slip, even though you crank them down so hard, it'll still slip somehow on a curved surface. Let me just double check that. That's it. Get that out of there. If I can, Jesus. There we go. As you can see, so there is also more to go on the front of this later on in the build. That's why that small hole is still visible. Now next up for step number nine is installing these two 10 millimeter flange bearings in either uh, side of these mounts here. And they are very tight tolerance. You have to push them in or kind of tap them in slowly. We also have this drive shaft here and bear in mind it goes in a particular way. We also need to slide this in there, just like that, so it all lines up perfectly, just like that. And we also need a small space there that is, I think, 10 millimeters as well, so that goes on the end there, just like that. And then the other pulley here slides on, just like that until everything is nicely lined up. And as you can see, just a quick eyeball, these need to be perfectly in line. This 
bottom pulley here with this other pulley. And I forgot to mention there's a little ground off flat section there that is where you need to make sure your grub screw is hitting when you tighten it down. So we can just push this in. There we go, there that seems on the money, it's nice and flat at the end. Very nice, so I've got to get my, there are two different sizes of um, grub screws as well. So you have to just be careful, we've got 4x4 four four and 3x4, so there's a lot of different uh, sizes in this kit. And uh, you've got to make sure you just double check everything because you can have a uh, problem when you're putting the wrong thing in. Just lock this away so I can finish this particular step. And I've got Loctite everywhere. Nearly finished with this Hobby King one. It's running a bit low. I like the gel style that the Tamiya kits have. I might get uh, one of them later. So that's it. Clean it up a little bit and there we go. So as you can see, it runs really nicely. And we need to lock off this other end. So what is required, we have a small washer here and that's a tiny same diameter as this or slightly larger. Slides over on this end just like that. And the other pulley which is the 19 tooth pulley slides over the end just like that and as you can see it has a key there as well so that'll slide it down just like that and everything is nice and tight so I'll put that other scrub screw in right now. Okay now that is done now the last part for step 9 is attaching this realistic belt and that just simply goes over this end and slides over there. Really really cool we'll line everything up that's it really cool and obviously the motor will come down this other side I'll get this under there like that so you get the idea of it but that uh, is running really nice and smooth hope there's no issues with this belt wandering off time will tell but uh, you don't make sure you don't squash these two pulleys in when you tighten them give them a little bit of like half a millimeter either side so it does spin freely but uh, that is step nine Okay, so step 10 requires us to build this smaller little kind of bulkhead that has a small shaft and a pulley at the end as well. And uh, I've got all the parts ready here. So first up we need this nice little aluminium piece here. And we need to put, there are three small bearings that go in here and they are 5mm flange ball bearings. and just pop them in. They're really, really tight tolerances, so here we go. Snap goes one in there. Number two is in there now. And we have these kind of aluminium standoffs, and we've got these quite long 25mm button head screws, and they are simply just going to go through here just like that. Nothing to it. And this eventually will screw to the back of those four holes. So pretty cool. And what's also going on through here is you're gonna have this shaft running through there, through those two newly put in bearings, just like that. Ready to go. Very nice, everything seems to roll no problems whatsoever and also I'll show everything without tidying everything down we have another pulley that goes here as well and that is a 14 tooth I'll just go get that one out of the box that is that guy slides on the end here and also third and final bearing as well will sit on just like that onto the end and fit into this whole housing so what I'll do it's a bit tricky on camera, I'll put it all together and I'll show you how it looks at the end. Oh plus, sorry, we also have another cable and that is 3M111. Okay, so this is basically it. Make sure you put the belt on because you won't be able to get it in once you put these standoffs in and all these screws. So make sure everything is lined up and just slowly do some of these screws up. 
don't want to overstretch it and bend it too much. I'll just go a little bit here and there, just like that. I have thread lock. I put some thread lock just in here on the four standoffs at the other end. I tell you, I'm enjoying doing this kit. Like uh, like I said before, this is my first road kit or drift car even. So yeah, something different. It's good. Uh, this hobby is good to try some new things out. I'll just stick to the same thing. So there we go there. I haven't put in the grub screw for this particular pulley yet because I want to make sure everything lines up. Let's just put this over there. There we go. So so far so good. Everything is running smooth. Not much friction at all there. And uh, yeah, I've heard that it runs really quiet as well. So what I'll do, I'll make sure the particular pulley is on the flat section and I will lock that down as well and also to finish this step off you need to install the end here like it's a dog bone end there and that requires the 4 mil set screw just in there <laughs> sorry had a lost track of mine there but that is it because number 11 yeah it's nearly all done so well, there's actually a few more steps actually but Nearly forgot, last step for um, step 10 is you got to make these little kind of like tie rods up and they connect this guy here. So I've got to kind of make them one like that and one like that, one facing down and one facing up. Snip it on there and snap it on there and that is it. And then that is good to go. Adjust this in a little bit. And then that's it, and step 10 is done. There we go, there. Okay, now step 11 seems to be the belt tensioner, because this whole unit sits in front of the engine and it does have as you can see a ball bearing and it is adjustable through that little slider mechanism there which is good because I wasn't too sure because you know this belt could jump off so having this belt tensioner at the front just like that is excellent so step 11 is just assembling the belt tensioner and it's very easy one long bolt which is 16 millimeters a little uh, 5 or 6 millimeter washer and a bearing at the end and capped off with a nut just there and that's just going to sit up there so I'll put this little section together I'll put this little nut on the end so this little section is done there we go just like that so very nice so I'll just give you a little visual what I'm talking about so it sits in here and see it just pushes against that particular belt and I've just put it near midway so obviously that can be adjusted and uh, also what needs to be added here is this bearing which seats just in here press fit these things are really hard to get in you've got to try to make it uh, do it evenly there we go just like that and that is going to sit on this main shaft right there so if we just slide that on just like that there we go so push that in roughly where it's going to be there we go, so as you can see, that little bearing, which is the belt tensioner, is riding up on this belt and giving it some flexibility, so, not flexibility, just a bit of tension so it doesn't want to jump off, so that's really cool, and I've kind of left some of these, um, or not really put uh, much Loctite on some of these pulleys so I can adjust everything. Once everything is where it should be, all the drive shafts are centered and everything like that, then I can adjust it, but so far it definitely looks cool. And that belt tensioner is just in the center and it's just giving a little bit of tension just enough so it doesn't want to slip off. Two eight millimeter flathead screws or countersunk head screws, sorry, are required to secure the, this whole unit on there. Very easy. And all these uh, hardware is the same style of screw, different sizes, eight mil, 10 mil, 16 mil, but that's all three millimeter wide. 
So there we go. So that's in there nicely. And then you got one more 10 millimeter screw, which goes right in there. So it's a bit longer. Make sure we put some thread tight on, thread lock, thread tight. <laughs> Just like that. And in we go. And then I was at my uh, crazy hobbies the other day and I was looking at some of the wheels and tyres. There's so many nowadays, it's amazing. Such a big range and they're so cheap comparative to uh, some of the monster truck stuff. But there we go. Everything is in there. That is step 11. So looks really cool. Wipe off some of the excess and that's it. Step 10 is, step, sorry, step 11 is done. Let's get on to step 12 and that's attaching this huge aluminium piece for the front and the actual steering mechanism right there. So, step 12, we need to attach these two risers on either side and they require two 8mm flathead screws. So I'll just torque these ones down. A little bit difficult to do it all on camera while trying to hold it at the same time and screw it as well. So there we go, just like that. Swipe away some of the excess. And there we go. Ooh, went a little bit ambitious on that uh, Loctite there. <laughs> anyway, at least we know that's not coming undone. And here is the other piece like that. And it just sits in there. Just like that. And then the other piece goes on top. Okay, next step, we have these two risers installed. We need to put this aluminium kind of curve which follows the bottom carbon fibre profile. And it just sits on top like that using the same uh, 3 by 8 millimeter screws up in here so you need four to hold it up in place and that is it so the front end is nearly done actually it's looking really really good and uh, yeah I think I've said it a few times but so far really impressed with the build quality of this and I need to get some more Loctite, oh, that was ambitious it's going to be a lot now, sorry, a correction, you need four screws, but the top, the fr sorry, the front two are eight millimeter and the bottom two, or well, the rear two, are 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, just because it has a little bit more meat to dig into. So uh, we'll get this side all buttoned up. Drunk there with that liquid nails, liquid nails, Loctite. I think I need a coffee. Ooh, yeah, I'm loving the look of that now. It looks so mechanical. I'm really digging this carbon fiber and aluminium look. So that's done. Next up, we have to install this steering mechanism, and that goes just under here, just like that. So let me get the uh, the hardware that's needed. For that, we need two three by eight millimeter screws. These ones right here. Now this is where you position it in between these two ones here. So kind of on that high point. Super easy. I've already screwed the other one down so I can just hold it and manage it a bit easier. But there we go, so it goes in that particular direction with the longer side there. But that's it, everything seems to be working nice and smooth. And there's all ball bearings everywhere, so it's like clockwork, it's so smooth and works really, really well. So that is step 12. The front end is nearly done. The good thing about it, it's in modular, so you've got like the front, the middle and the rear, and you join them all. Um, at the end. So step 13, we need to get the springs that we already uh, made earlier and drive shafts. Now step 13 requires you to put all the uh, drive shafts in and everything but the good thing about the kit it was already pre-assembled with the drive shafts in so that pretty much is step 13 all done for us just there. So we can move on to step 14 where we actually got to attach this to the front section of the car that we just made. Now the only thing we really need to do, sorry for step 13, is attach the ball screw up underneath here for both of those. That's it. Okay, so next up we need to actually attach this to the lower A-arm and we need one 12mm screw and space it out on top with one washer just like that. Can't forget my favourite Loctite. like that and uh, make sure we got the uh, right side we need maybe thread that actual dog bone in there as well I don't think it matters as yet because we have to still move it a lot 
but uh, just in case, so it's a little bit hard to do on camera, talking, it always seems to be a bit harder to do when um, you're on the camera. Here we go, come on. Here we go. There we go, that looks pretty sweet. So as you can see, that's it. And see, that's why it looks like it's a McPherson style strut. It's exactly like you'd see in your normal road going car, which is pretty cool. Now, obviously, I'll do the next, uh, the other side off camera, but also we need to make some, so yeah, like tie rods, just like that. That's like I said, they're the only plastic, uh, a lot of the only plastic piece, pieces in the kit. So let me make that guy up and we'll attach it from here to here. And that is how we want it one facing up, one facing down. And all you need to do is you pop it on the end. Like that, and just like that, and there we have it. One, didn't pop it on properly. Make sure that's all straight, otherwise, it doesn't like to sit on. There we go. One side done. Very nice. That uh, seems to perform well. Everything seems to fit good, as you can see. That's what I'm looking at. Not bad. We also have this sweet carbon fiber piece, kind of like a brace, to fit on the front here. Just like that as well. So we'll get that. There we go. So that carbon fiber piece just sits in like there. It looks really cool and that's secured with four eight millimeter screws. Okay, this is the last part for step 14. And this completes the whole front section bar the uh, motor and everything, but they'll do that later on. I hope you guys have been enjoying this build series. Sorry, uh, I can't do, you know, more close-ups or something like that. Sometimes it's just a little bit too hard to do everything on camera, but I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying it so far. Now, with this all buttoned up, it is very rigid. I can tell you that much. This whole section is built like a tank. And there we go. We have both steering in there we go it is turning obviously they will be set up later on and uh yeah happy days i'm really enjoying this build so far so that's the front section done because step 15 starts on the back so there's a, the back lower a arm so step 15 will start the next build series video so any questions you know where to leave them guys I'm going to go check out uh, this guy. The link, the link is in the description. It's from Banggood. Um, yeah, seems like an awesome bit of kit so far. So thanks, guys. It's Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video in this build series. And if you haven't, please subscribe. And if you want, share the video and uh, all that good stuff. So thanks, guys. Catch you in the next video.